Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know we're in a slightly different part of the room today. Um, my name is Rish and today, uh, if you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I asked whether you would like to see a back to school stationery haul slash my favorite products slash um, study tips and that kind of stuff. And I think actually that we can turn this into a series of videos that hopefully will help you because if there is one thing I can offer <laughs> to this conversation, it is the fact that I was a massive nerd in school. Like I used to ace my exams, I used to ace my class tests and I will show you exactly how. So for this video series, for the very first video in our series, I'm going to share with you a recent stationery haul that I did literally this weekend, of oh, the last weekend by the time this goes up, and I will share with you some of my favourite tools of the trade. So let's jump in. Right, so depending on the kind of person you are, it is very important to start the year, the school year, with a planner. Now, if you can't be bothered with creating a planner of your own, get something like this. So this is my content planner, which I started using at the start of the year and then I kind of found that it doesn't really work for me. So um, the way this is set up, is you have a week to a spread. So you have Monday there, Friday or Saturday there. And the, down here, you've got little note sections for each day. And this, this is pretty much how the rest of the notebook is. And I think this, personally, if I did have to go with a pre-printed planner I would definitely go for this one because it is much more sensible to have a week to a spread rather than like waste pages on a printed planner for dailies and things like that especially when it's something this big so that is a great option and the other option is of course to just make your own and if you've been watching any of my videos, you know, sorry, I'm very distracted. My dog's getting into all my stuff. So if you're more into DIY and things like that, you can set up your own planner. And this is an opportunity to get a lot more creative and set it up exactly how you want. So this is obviously my current bullet journal. And as you can tell, there's a lot of watercolors going on this this quarter actually um, and you can get very creative you can play around with a bullet journal but I understand that it's not everyone's cup of tea hence why I showed you the other planner um, I obviously prefer this a lot more now especially now that I'm not in school anymore um, I wish I had started with a bullet journal much sooner because it would have honestly saved my life um, excuse you so obviously a bullet journal is not for everyone, but it just allows me more room to create and be artistic and things like that, which I think is very important for me personally on my day to day. So that's why a bullet journal works for me. Um, and the next thing you're going to need is pens. And when I was in school, I didn't really appreciate fine liners as much as I do now. Um, I usually stuck to ink pens or gel pens. I remember I used to have these, um, I had this one Harry Potter ink pen, I think it was a fountain pen, and I loved it, but it leaked everywhere. But currently I stick to fine liners, and my favourite ones that I've tried so far um, are these uni pin fine liners. In, and my favourite uh, nib width is 0.3, uh, although I don't have them in 0.4 and 0.5 as well. I just find that 0.3 is just the most conducive to writing for me. And of course, no one can go to school without a pencil 
Now, this is just a regular click pencil. I think you can find like a pack of five of these for a couple of dollars tops. Um, but you want to find just a decent sturdy one and then just invest in good quality leads, especially if you're into uh, diagrams and architecture and art and that kind of stuff. It's much wiser to invest in higher quality lead and just buy some cheap holders. One of the things that I was requested to try are art line markers. And I'd seen these in the store quite a lot, um, but I never really bought them because I had no use for them. But I was like, do you know what? It's back to school. We're going to get a whole new set of pens. And hopefully I will put a little swatch sheet right there. Um, I actually quite like these. I think these are right up there with Stedler. So I haven't really been a fan of the Stedler fine liners. I know, I know you're probably going to like send an entire army of people to kill me right now. <laughs> but I honestly, I just never fell in love with them. I mean, yeah, they're okay as far as fine liners go, but for the price, I feel like they dry out too easily and they are not nearly pigmented enough. But with these babies, I actually tried them out for the first time today and I think they're gonna last me a lot longer and they look so much brighter and so much more pigmented. So I'm really excited to use this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so thanks for that suggestion. Um, the other thing I found from Artline were these uh, calligraphy ergo line pens. Now, these have a bad rap in the market. I personally don't love these um, because I don't know what it is. They're just not comfortable to use for lettering, hand lettering and things like that. So if you look right there, right now, um, you'll see just how much I struggled with these. So in the interest of honesty, not my favorite. They are very pigmented, but the thing to remember is it says back here that the ink is water-based. So what that means is it is going to smudge if you drop some water on it. You cannot watercolor over it and you cannot use these on wet paper because it will bleed, it will blur, it will go everywhere. So basically this is watercolor ink in a pen. Um, <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind. I know some people love these because these have chisel tips and things like that. But personally, I just much, much prefer um, brush pens any day. And speaking of, you will need for your school year, or work year, or college year, <laughs> you will need a bunch of highlighters. And actually, it might make more sense to invest in some pastel colored brush pens instead. So these are Tombos, these were a birthday present, and I much prefer this over highlighters because I find that a lot of the cheap highlighters tend to bleed right through any page, especially notebook paper, which is so skinny. Um, these don't. These are also water-based, like the calligraphy pens, so they will smudge if you, if you happen to spill some water on it. But because they are pastel, they're not overwhelmingly bright and they won't, like, distract you, um, but rather the fact that they come with brush tips, it is incredibly helpful because it's going to give you different levels of thickness, which is another problem I find with highlighters is that not every book comes with the same size of print. And I don't know if this has happened to you, but it's happened to me so many times that I try to highlight one line and it highlights like three others under it because the print is so little and my highlighter was so big. Um, so that is not a problem because the brush tip is flexible and the harder you press, the thicker the line you get. So you can work with so many more sizes of print. I, I don't know why I'm harping on about this, but it was such a big problem for me. Maybe it's just me. Um, let me know in the comments if this was a problem for you as well. And um, speaking of thickness, um, the other thing you will need is correction tape. Now, this is just a regular Tipex little mouse, I think it's called. Yep, it's a pocket mouse. But, so these, again, if you look at the video, 
These are great, but they can be very fidgety um, because sometimes the tape just doesn't want to function. So instead, try to look for a decent gel pen that works. The one that works best for me is the Uni Pin Sino. I think this is a 0.7 nib and this is in the color, what are you? <laughs> Creamy white. This stuff will write on anything and it shows up. And sometimes you might have to like give it a little shake because I think the pigment separates from the binder a little bit, but um, that could just be because it's so warm here and it's, and a lot of like nail polish and makeup separates because of the heat. So it could just be that you might not have the same problem, but in case you're looking for a decent gel pen that will write on black paper, on black ink, on black boards, <laughs> this stuff will work. And on a similar vein, I also own this exact, uh, I also own this exact pen in silver and gold as well. And they work just as well. I actually think that these are slightly thicker and they work slightly better than just the white. But um, if you're looking for metallic pens, these are a great option. I know they do these in loads of colors, but I don't use gel pens quite as much, so I didn't find the need to invest in them. Um, but that's a great option if you're interested. So, washi tape. Now, I <laughs> call me crazy, I don't think these are essential. I know a lot of people love washi tapes. I do too, especially the really pretty ones and the really decorative ones, but I don't see the function of them. And um, if I go back to what I was like as a student back in school, as a teenager, I had no use for like frivolous stuff. So you could tell me, oh, look, it's a pretty pair of pants. And I'm like, but how big are the pockets, right? So <laughs> washi tape, I don't see how these are essential to school life. But if you're into it, I would suggest getting these little skinny ones because they, I don't know why, but they just work so much better for me. The thick ones just seem to take far too much space. And if you do a lot of paper projects, so charts and um, giant cards and things like that, I would suggest getting a good roll of masking tape. Now, this is not expensive at all. So this is great for marking out borders, marking out spaces that you don't want to paint over or write over. Um, but sometimes the glue can be quite sticky and you might rip off some paper, which you don't want. So a great trick is to blow dry it with the heat on like maximum. So the heat breaks the glue that causes this tape to stick and this will come off a lot easier. So there's another pro tip. <laughs> you of course need a giant eraser. This one is, it's like called Architect. Yeah, it's called Architect Eraser. I don't know why. I mean, that's just racist. Architects are not the only ones who use giant erasers. I mean, I do. But <laughs> anyway, so a giant eraser is a must because it will not get lost. And if you get one in like a case like this, you will probably know exactly where it is because it will be noisy. Now, of course there is paper clips and clamps. So this is a really cute one I got at Paper Chase. Um, this came in a set of really cute stationery, which also involves this little pack of green U clips or paper clips. Um, I actually use this quite a lot more than I thought I was. Of course, this pack came with a bunch of these and a stapler and a bunch of little sticky note thingies, which I have lost because I moved so many times when I was at uni. And on a similar note, you want a good set of sticky tabs. Now, these aren't too sticky, as in they won't rip the paper off once you're done using them and once you want to rip them off, but they stay just long enough that you can, you know, trust them not to just fly away. All right, so 
one of my internet friends, Shauna, was so kind as to send me a massive package of uh, stationary stuff, face masks, all those amazing, thoughtful presents. Um, and one of the things she sent me were these little uh, sticky card things. So these are just um, tiny little memo page thingies where you can just write down like last minute notes and stuff and I thought that was so cute and I think if you're into little motivational messages every single day or if you're into writing things down on flashcards why not get a cute set you know so thank you Shauna these are adorable and she also sent me some pretty much all of my essentials. Of course you need a good backpack and the one I used was from Paper Chase, of course. Um, I used to live at Paper Chase. <laughs> In fact, this is a magnetic list pad um, and you can like rip these off and it comes with a checklist printed onto it. And this was so useful, you can stick it on your fridge. I have mine on a cupboard and that will last forever. That has literally traveled continents with me. And she also sent me these adorable little paper clips. So this one says, hello. Um, and this one is a light bulb. And she'd also sent me one that was a speech bubble, which spirals into a little heart shape. And these are so cute. And I cannot believe she remembered to send these because I remember texting her a long time ago saying, Shauna, these are really cute. Where'd you find them? I need them. And she just went, you know, I'm just gonna send them to you. So <laughs> thank you for these. So thoughtful and so pretty and so cute. So I think those are all of my essentials for school supplies and college supplies. I know a lot of people go um, crazy with a thousand folders or a thousand like little sheets of paper and I just think that is so wasteful if you're gonna take notes use a spiral pad that comes with recycled paper that's going to save the planet and it's gonna save you so much clutter um, if you need the sheets loose you can just rip them out but I just I don't I can't deal with like the fold thing I, I tried it in my first year at university and it was just so much clutter to recycle at the end of the year like I had to set aside a whole day just to take those papers out of the little clamp folder and put them in the recycling it took me a whole day to do that before I moved out so don't don't waste paper don't waste money on things that you won't use but if you do find something that you will genuinely use you might as well buy the cute one right <laughs> so there you go guys those are some of my essentials i hope you've enjoyed this laid back chill video if you like this setup a little more let me know in the comments below or give this video a thumbs up so i know because i actually think this is quite um useful quite um, visually appealing and you can't see the clutter that's on the other side of my room so <laughs> so uh, yeah as always if you like this video remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe below and if you haven't already check out all of my social media links I'll leave them all in the description check out my blog I have tons of helpful stuff on there and hit that notification bell right next to the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss the rest of this series um, all right, you guys, thank you so much for being here and spending some time with me today. You know, I always love spending time with you and I will see you again next week. Bye.